Candy corn! <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome. It is Friday, which means it is time for another paint and slay with myself, Lee, and Lauren up above. And today we are continuing with our fantastic candy corn ropers. Yes, you heard that right. Candy corn ropers as inspired by our fantastic chat. <laughs> I, I know if I hold it that. straight up, it's it's gonna it's gonna fall, but or, or maybe it won't, maybe it won't. There we go. <laughs> da, da. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be working on finishing up these two miniatures today because these two minis are actually going towards a very good cause because don't forget after paint and slay today we're switching it up a little bit and instead there's going to be a D, &D one shot happening yeah. so we are working with Weva and they are going to be having the halloween haunt which is happening right after paint and slay b dave walters is your dm and as you can see fantastic cast of players Oh my gosh, can't wait to sit in on this one. Uh, but these Roper Minis are going to be donated so that if you want to get these Roper Minis, make sure you enter to win type of situation. And two lucky winners will each get one of these minis. So yeah, Lauren and I are very excited to participate and uh, lend our candy corn Ropers to a fantastic cause. So just heads up on that one. And, uh, and I think we have? we have I think mm -hmm. we have the Tiltify link uh, Ooh, to go ahead and put into chat. Wonderful. So if you do want, yes. if you can't watch the stream live, but you still want to donate and mm -hmm. you can still be eligible for a whole bunch of the, the raffles and everything, go ahead and follow that Tiltify link. Uh, you can not only donate for a good cause and for awesome prizes, but depending on the tier that you donate at, mm -hmm. you can give players advantage, you can give uh, the DM advantage, you can make awesome things happen. <laughs> so uh, definitely go check that out. Here, let me let me grab that. Streaming for Survivors Ooh. 2022 Halloween Hunt. Go! Go! Ta-da! Um, look at you go. Yeah, it's in look the chat at me. now. Look. <laughs> yeah. So, uh go definitely check that out and uh join us cuz I'll be hanging around in chat as Yay. long as I can myself Same. and I've already got my donation in. Uh Ooh. I I <laughs> donated. So, I I will just say it. I donated to give Alicia a reroll because um my children of Verte family got to support her. Of so, course. so that's that's where my donation went towards, but Excellent. you know, maybe you want to give Nora a a uh, an advantage or Tanya or yeah. Jeremy or yeah. yeah or B Dave help or the DM Jimmy. I mean gosh all of them are great options quite frankly <laughs> pretty much pretty much and like it says on there if you donate at least ten dollars you get a free TTRPG bundle which grows bigger every time I look at it it's a whole big digital thing yeah uh so just cool. for a little bit of money you can uh not only get some amazing things but help an amazing cause if you don't mm -hmm. have any money like I have been in that situation where I haven't had a buck to to spare. If you can share with other people, maybe on your socials or in your family, let them know this is happening because oftentimes um, the more that it's shared, it's not about you individually being able to give money, but you being able to get other people who have the disposable income. So mm -hmm. uh, do what you can, come by and have a lot of fun with us. And then, and then someone's going to get my roper. Yay! <laughs> I, which I told V before the show, I'm only slightly nervous about giving away my roper to someone else because this will be the first time that I've given, donated, sold, I don't know, anything, donated. a, yeah. a mini go. to anyone else. So it'll be memorable. My, Absolutely. My, my first one who's going away. Yay. All right. So with that all being said, um, what else do we have going on oh. in game? Um. I'll also say we've got Martin in chat. Thank you, Martin, for be being our moderator today. If you do Yay. have any questions about mini painting, about idol champions, uh, 
about the stream coming up, although, you know, we, we can only say so much. Go ahead and put sure. those in chat with question in big capital letters so that Martin can grab it so that when I am fretting over little tiny details, we don't miss your question. Nope. Um, also, this weekend is the final weekend to unlock Kent in Idol Champions. Uh, so make sure you get on in this weekend and get your final opportunity to, uh, well, not final, final, but, you know, Liar's Night is ending soon, and you're going to want to get in there and get Kent and do what I'm doing, which is just have a team in there getting as many chests as possible so that Kent can be as fabulously geared as he is. And uh, after this weekend, on Monday, we have episode three of Idol Champions Presents Hunger of the Far Realms. Yep, there, there, there they are. There they are. If you have not been watching, it's been absolutely fantastic, not only because all these people are mm -hmm. amazing performers and these are awesome characters, but they have gelled really well. These these two teams of, of champions have just come mm -hmm. together and it's been amazing to watch them all work together. It's been amazing to watch Brian completely destroyed B Dave. It's been absolutely incredible. Uh, if you've missed the first two episodes, you can go to our YouTube, which I will put in chat, which is the Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms YouTube, and get episodes one and two so that you can catch up. Uh, if you don't have the time to catch up, but you can make it on Monday, come by because B Dave does a pretty good mm -hmm. recap at the beginning, so you won't be that far behind. And you still have three more, three, one, two, yes, three more votes for things that will happen in the D&D game that you're voting for in Idol Champions. In fact, I think there's a new vote now. Yeah, there should be. Someone in chat is going to have to tell me because I don't have the game up. And V and I remember like all the votes <laughs> because Swing we helped like fall. look over everything. <laughs> so we don't necessarily know what specific vote is today. So yeah. someone can double check what the vote for today is in chat. Put that in chat. I'd appreciate it. That would be lovely. Thank You'll put it in both yes. of us. For a little, oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's the day it's happening. Uh, All right. Bookish oh. says insomnia versus paranoia. Oh, yeah. Mm. That was a fun Ooh. one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I'm Ready. probably going insomnia because I think that'll be funnier. Insomnia is too relatable. <laughs> well, and I think I, I just, <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably why. <laughs> I think that's probably why I think it's funnier. Anyway, Anyways, I think that's everything. Thank that you, everybody, is, in chat. Is, thank you, thank you. Let's, 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 paint. let's paint a mini. So we're going to, uh, we worked on the eye, got that finished up. So the eye is all set and done. We'll just have to put some um, gloss uh, Mod Podge Ultra onto it to make it all nice and shiny. We'll do the same thing. But that means we need to move on to the mouth. So we need to mix some paints for the mouth, which means you want your ultramarine blue, which is your classic, classic blue. If you're not using the Vallejo game line, and you're also going to want bloody red, which is classic red, if you're not using Vallejo, and then a little bit of black. So we're going to aim for like a plum purple color with this mix. So it's going to be red, uh, probably two parts red to a part and a half of blue to a part black. And All right. Part black. Two parts blue to a part red to a half a part of black. Switch that. <laughs> Two parts, two parts red. red to about a part and a half of blue. And then uh, I'm going to say half part to a part of black. All right. So we're going to mix these up and then we're going to thin this out because what we're doing this week in this episode is we're working with glazes, which is basically very thinned out paint so that it can go over and it will tint the under layers that we've already created with the various grays and the whites and the black that we did last week. All the glazing. All the glazing, the glazing, glazing. <laughs> and you said we're, we're looking for a plum? A plum tone. I'll do a little swatch on my hand before I thin it out. Because mm. if I thin it out after I've, when I go to swatch it and it's been thinned out, it gets interesting on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. Uh, I, I, I think imagine. I've got a plum, but it's it's a pretty dark plum. Was okay. Is this a add more red? Well, let's see how close you are to my plum. Yeah, we'll see. It's a, it's just, it's a very, very dark plum. Yeah. All right. And then let me see, because we, I think we already had some questions in Ooh. chat. Double Crayon wants to know, um, oh, how did the Expanse show go? Sadly, I had other things going on. Hey, listen, that is totally understandable. Um, first off, real life happens. Mm -hmm. And second off, 
Um, there are three billion streams going on at the same time. Oh so goodness. I appreciate that you thought about it and wanted to come on by. If you do want to catch it, it was a super fun show. I do know it's up on the YouTube now. Um, oh yeah, I can already see yours is much brighter than mine. Yeah. So, so add in a little bit more red and a little bit more blue. Okay. I it just had too much too much black. Yeah. Sounds okay. Like. Uh, right, so but yeah, the show went really out. well. We raised several hundred dollars for World Kitchen. Nice. Um, I I I played a Belter, and I'm I'm pretty happy with how I did. It is a horror game, uh, so I won't spoil how everything went. Uh, mm -hmm. But you'll have to watch to find out. But I had lots of fun. That's nah, good. Hold on a second. Fun oh. is the best part. Uh huh. All right, uh -huh. I'm thinning this out until it's the consistency of um, skim milk. Hmm. Normally go for yeah, warm gonna... maple syrup, but this time we're going for runny skim milk. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh, that sounds so pleasant, doesn't it? All right, I think we're we're getting there. It's still still dark. Okay. If you want to do a quick lighten, um, it might. I just don't want to tip you into pastels. You could put in a touch of Stonewall Gray. Uh, I may go for a if if this was a regular um if this is a regular roper I'd mm -hmm. probably say no but we're already candy corn color yeah. on this so I so. think I think I'm gonna stonewall gray it up. Or, stonewall? <laughs> stonewall There's a gray it yo yeah. It'll just make life easy. Yeah, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start painting up the roper's mouth, which is basically. <laughs> Roper mouths are funny. So you see how we have these vertical striations here? That's actually sort of part of its mouth. And then the gums. Ugh. If you take a look at Helen. So what I'm going to do is underneath ah. that first striation, I'm then going to go in and do those two that point together. Right here. Oh, because that will be the the point in where everything mm -hmm. will blend yeah uh, okay uh, and i think that stonewall gray worked so now i just gotta awesome. add some water so as you can see it's going on very thin to the point where you can still see as this dries you'll see that the layering that we did last week is going to start coming through as this dries it's sort of hard to show it right now as it is wet because the wet likes to do a flashback with the lighting that i have going on but this is a fun little way to enhance details ahead of time and then put color on like a dis. Hey. But the trick is to keep the layers of paint thin. Yeah, and I think I need more water. You don't want to glob it up. This is going everywhere in the mouth and the gums except for the tongue. No tongues. No tongues. No tongues, no tongues. Uh, Kevin Bowler wants to know, can you explain the process for making parts glossy versus others matte? Also, varnish versus Mod Podge. Ooh, there's a lot of questions there. Same thing Good for question. varnish and Mod Podge. They're the same thing. It's just one is a brand name and it's a brand that I use all the time and can support and recommend. There are other varnishes out there that you can use. Absolutely. Um, so basically, you're talking about Kleenex and tissues. That's, ah. that's what we're talking about there. Um, and I will, I will tip into using specific brands if it's something that I know is tried and true on my end. Um, so you could use a varnish that is a matte, a varnish that is a gloss, a varnish that is a satin, if you so choose. But in this case, I really like how the Mod Podge Ultra works on my miniatures. So that's why I will say Mod Podge Ultra. But if you have a gloss varnish, that too will also get the job done. And then Ew, what gets the job done. Exactly. And what was the other part of the question? It was. Um, can you explain the process for making parts glossy versus others matte? Yeah, the process is basically get your colors on first. And then when you go to do your seal coats, you choose which of those seal coat variations, which I just mentioned, matte, glossy, satin, you want to put into those areas to make them matte, glossy or satin, which is a soft glow. It's not as bright and shiny as a gloss would be. So that's sort of something you figure out once you finish painting your miniature. You add that in at the end. Hmm. So it has a, a two-fold um, process there. It will help protect the paint, 
from chipping off, etc. But it'll also add further details by becoming glossy or matte. Very cool. Yeah. Hopefully that answers and the I, questions. And I see you're trying to avoid the teeth. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to avoid the teeth a little bit. If you teeth get some tongue. on the teeth, yeah, the teeth and tongue. Um, if you get some on the teeth, it's not going to be as bad because we are going to go in and just straight up paint the teeth for the most part because it'll be a thicker glaze um, and it should cover the purple. But the tongue, I am doing my best to kind of just get a little bit towards the back and leave the rest of it open. Mm. Um, oh, we've got Cypher of Tear in chat. Hey, hey hi, welcome. Hello. Um, you miss it. We were just talking about the awesome show that you're going to be in in less than two hours. Uh, oh, also, we've got um, someone from WVAW, probably, maybe Charlie. Charlie. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe, maybe. We've got could awesome be, people. So be. hi to the both of you. You know, I'm I'm just nervously painting a mini that's going to be raffled oh, off. It's going to be lovely. Not, not nervous. Not nervous at all. No need to be um, nervous. <laughs> the Moles Revenge jokes, why do you keep locking these champions up in the first place as Sini and some, you know, uh, it's it's not that they're locked up. It's that, you know, like we, to we take vacations. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Uh, <laughs> vacation time. And you can always uh, use a time gate to grab them and pull mm -hmm. them out of vacation mode. <laughs> take a second and look at the underside of the mouth and where mm -hmm. you are. All right, I'm going to let that dry. And then... I'm just, I'm just finishing up the bottom of the jaw here. Cool. I'm going to mix for the tongue, which is basically going to be bloody red with a little touch of black. All right. So red, but not so red. Red, but not so red. Kind of going for a... Um, Trying to think of a good color here, like a black cherry almost. Oh, I miss cherries. It is well past. Cherry. Yeah, it is. it is well past cherry season around here, and oof. I mean, it's getting into pomegranate season, so I'm happy about that. I'm but... very pleased with that one for sure. Mm -hmm. As a fellow pomegranate fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be going over to the store this weekend to pick up a bunch of stuff, and I'm hoping the big pomegranates are out. Oh, I put too much Hoping, hoping, hoping. Ah. Yeah, I just did the same, and I'm having to readjust. Yep, it happens. Mm -hmm. It absolutely happens. Black is just very, very strong. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. There's the cooler I want. All right. Also, welcome to everybody that's coming on in. Hello, hello. Uh, so there's the color swatch for you on my wrist. Yeah, I think Beautiful I got that. Hello. I think I'm close. Sweet. I'm going to thin that All out right. as well. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about the water. Yeah. Like I said, we're going to be using a... My camera arm is pulling my hair. We're going to be using a lot of water today to get these glazed out. And again, aim for skim milk. And my paper plate is going to be filled with stuff today. Yes, I actually grabbed multiple multiple paper plates today because I know I'm probably going to go through a couple. Yeah. I, I I might have to run and go grab another paper plate. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see what happens. There we go. Ta-da! Sorry, I've gotten very quiet. Oh, yeah. No, it's fine. It's totally cool. So we have that going for us. Blah. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I love that we're essentially at the point where it still could look <laughs> like it's going to be a terrifying roper. And then eventually it's going to be, nope, nope. It's going to be not terrifying at all. Not terrifying at all. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, just clean up around this tongue a little bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Then I'm going to take this same mix that we just made. The red? The red. 
uh, take a dry brush to it and we're going to dry brush over the gum line where the teeth are. Ah. Just add a little extra pop. And because this is thinned out, you are going to need to make sure you're pulling a little bit more off your brush. But just run this across the top of the teeth area and the gum. Well, not the teeth area, but the gum lines. And you shall see. Ta-da! Ta-da, gums. Gums. Details. Depth. Hooray! And same on the bottom? Yep. Ah, oh, these crystals are going to make that a challenge. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm painting this, I'm like, oh yeah, now I remember why Helen was a little bit finicky in some spots. And you got to try and be careful that you're not getting it too much onto the um, hide. Do ropers have hide? They do now. They do now. <laughs> I mean, they pretend to be rocks. True. But they're obviously malleable. They can obviously move. Yeah. So having it be a hide-like consistency, you know, so that it can move, but it just looks like stone, that would mm -hmm. actually make a lot of sense. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Very happy with the way that mouth looks. And then we're going to get into the teeth. Okay. And that is where... Where my notes Yep, go? the creepiest of gums. Leather brown for the base color of the teeth, and then we'll move up to bone white. So we have some gnarly looking teeth. Leather brown. Okay, why? Because. Something is going on with my camera rig that every single time I lean over, like a strand of my hair keeps getting pulled, which is kind of creepy Aww. feeling when you're not expecting someone or something to touch your hair. <laughs> so you're today is the day for creepy right we're, we're ready for the uh creepiness scary all right so oh. you're gonna do that and then take a detail brush and paint all the tooths every tooth every tooth and my leather brown is actually very thin on its own so i don't need to thin mine out but if yours is coming out more than the consistency of warm maple syrup then you need to make sure you're thinning out your paint and now uh, i think I think mine's okay. Okay, then you're good. I think, I think. It's definitely thicker than the glazes we were just using, but yeah. not not too bad, not too bad. Um, uh, Flu Squeaky asks, is there a paint set you would recommend to someone returning to painting after 10 years? You convinced me to get back into it. Oh, yay. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, welcome. Welcome yes. back. Yeah. So we have, oh, I got to get the, hold on. Yeah, drink. I we don't have, have our... a drink today. Oops. <laughs> well, you know, we'll have to fix that in a little bit, but check out our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. Drink. Drink. The reason I suggest the Discord is because we have a um, paint and slay channel on the Discord that is all about all of this. And we have mm -hmm. a pinned a uh, post from way, way back where we have, here are the basic stuff that you need to get started. Uh, and that includes some details about the paint sets and the brushes and then, you know, having paper plates and paper cups and things like that. Uh, this specific set for paints is the Vallejo, let me see if I can grab it. It's the Vallejo game color line. I forget what, I think it's, I think it's their starter game, co game color line. Yeah, colors. Oh, no, that's that's French. I can't read that. Acry acrylic colors for fantasy figures. Um, kind of looks like this, except it has paints inside. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here, do this. Uh, and this is pretty much everything you need. Yeah. Um, the bot the bottles are like we've we're at episode 48. We've done a couple dozen minis, and I still have plenty of paint. Yeah. Um it, it even has a couple of fun things like silver in there for uh, for silver times. But that is the one that I am using. That is the one that we've been recommending because it is uh, a decent price. It gets you everything you need and it all yep. comes in one, one little kit. So definitely check those out at your friendly local game store. Um, and then don't forget when you're painting these teeth, there are another row of teeth inside of the mouth. Don't forget, once you're done with first teeth, get your second, second teeth. teeth. 
Yep, pretty much. Oh, second teeth. <laughs> yeah, I think that's 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 also something that I forgot about was like, oh yeah, ropers do have multiple rows. M- multiple rows of tooths. We'll we'll be getting to the more f- uh, Halloween ridiculous parts of this paint soon. Sh- of this yeah. 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 Shortly. Oh god, those are they're bitty. So so small. They're so bitty small choppers. Uh Evil Turnip T asks, so are these going to be alternate alternate universe Helens or polymorphed Helens or Helen in her Halloween costume? Uh, oh. Why not why not all three? I mean, it's whatever you would like. I've actually I I came across the name. I'm gonna name mine. So this is Chrissy. Chrissy Roper. Aww. Yeah. I have not named mine, but that's okay because it's it's going to be for a uh, raffle for charity. So whoever yeah. wins Can will just have it. to let me know what they name this mm-hmm. mini. Oh, geez, that second set of teeth. It's it's a doozy. Um, question colon asks a question. Who is Luca that has been mentioned a couple times on Idol Champions Presents? Aww, Luca is uh, a fantastic producer for the stream. Uh, so Luca runs the stream for us. Make sure it's going out to Twitch. Make sure we have our transitions and the music, et cetera, et cetera, going. I have worked with Luca for many years now uh, doing stream productions. Uh, they are known as Nomadic on Twitter and fantastic person. 100% agree with all of that. And yes. a, produ- a good producer is such a big help for yeah. especially a TTRPG show because it means all the people that are performing on that stream can focus on performing. Performing, yeah. Uh, because trying to perform and run a stream at the same time is very, very hard. Yeah. So and they're well versed in doing it. Oh, yes, absolutely. So you may never see nor hear Luca, but just know that they are there and they are making the stream more awesome with their presence and mm-hmm. their hard work. And that's why we thank them every single time. Yeah. And I, what I do behind the scenes is very different. Um, I'm more ground control. <laughs> so I literally have at least five different chats open to communicate with everyone who is involved with Idol Champions Presents. Um, so, yeah, that's why we're so often you will hear my voice because there are times I need to jump in and say, excuse me, B. Dave. Hey, Dave, you have to do something there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah. yeah, Idol Champions Presents has um, a surprising number of moving parts. It is way more than just the, you know, if you're if yeah. if you've watched other TTRPG streams, it can seem a lot like other TP- TTRPG streams. But there's a lot more going on behind the scenes simply because of like the voting that we have to incorporate with the uh, the game that has happened in Idol Champions. So just having those couple of extra people who, you know, can can help run things, it it just means everything gets done mm-hmm. a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, and with a lot less stress. So exactly, makes a big and difference. I have been, I've been on streams where we have a producer. I've been on streams where we uh, don't have a producer, and someone else who is also on stream is producing. I have been the person who is on stream and producing. Um, and it is a hundred percent easier for everybody when when mm-hmm. you can hire a producer. Oh, so good. Yeah. All right. I am done with the leather brown. I'm going in with my detail brush and a bone white. I'm using the side of my brush to basically just highlight the upper portions of the teeth. Yeah, I'm still finishing up a couple of spots on the bottom teeth, but totally I'm almost fair. there. The insides that always get you. Oh, they're tricky. Those wee little teeth inside? Yeah. Well, not just the the wee little ones inside, but like the back sides of the, the big teeth can, oh, yeah. also be, can also be a challenge. Mm-hmm. Okay. It can be fun. And uh, speaking of that bone white, you're just doing it on the outside of the big teeth? Or are you also doing um, like the outside of the little teeth? I, yes, I do both. <laughs> so outside inside but keeping it towards the top portion so like okay. the upper curvature of the tooth 
a highlight, not a... Exactly. We're not, not covering painting. it. We're highlighting it. Uh, the Moles Revenge wants to know, do ropers just sit on the ground or can they hang from the ceiling like stalactites as well? Oh, they can hang. They can hang. They can hang oh, with the best yes. of them. Mm -hmm. It is... Uh, that is actually one of the the ways that they get you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, not mm -hmm. everyone thinks to look up. And even if you do think to look up, it's just a stalagmite or yep. a stalactite. That's Helen's favorite song. Stalagmite or stalactite? No, one way or another. I'm ah. going to find you. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. Stopping there. Yep. Can't get me twitched. That's all we can Stopping do. there. I just saw, so a, a friend was streaming on Twitch last night, and mm -hmm. this morning he said that his Twitch stream got, uh, oh, I saw this. What's what's the, the term for it when it's not silenced, but they, the Twitch, Twitch basically gets rid of all the audio yeah. because of wind. Which, and I'm why? like, who copyrighted wind? Wait a second. Did Mother Nature come along? Like, what is this? So, I do yeah. not get that one at all. So uh, do not fool with the algorithm because Twitch, Twitch will get you. So one way they're going to find you and they're going to get you. They too like the song Helen likes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good song. It is a good song. Now I've got it stuck in my head. I did it to myself. Yep, yep. I mean, it's a good song, though. So it's not, it not, is. It's fun. It's not so bad. Could be worse. Uh, uh, come on, Teeth. You know you want to. Hey, there we go. Yeah, I'm still trying to get the inside ones. Yeah, she's got those gnarly twofers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, she may be... Th this one may be the friendly candy corn roper. But she could still defend herself in a fight. Yeah. Eh. Or is just eating far too much candy. <laughs> mm. Yeah, maybe that too. Not maybe a little touch of that. All right, cool, 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 cool. Let's see here. So that fix catered the mouth for us. Mm -hmm -hmm. And yeah, the tongue is basically, we don't have to worry about dry brushing it because you can see the highlights are playing through already. Which is why oh, I'm yeah. doing that. Um, ba ba ba. Oh, the tentacles. Moving on to the tentacles. It's time. It's time mm -hmm. for tentacles. Okay, this will be fun. This will be fun. All right, so we're going to go back to bloody red. And a smidgen of black. A smidgen of a pigeon. A smidgen? The tiniest? Mm -hmm. The tiniest twitch. Come on, Red. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry, there was a... There was gunk in the cap that I didn't even see until oh, the first time. Fun, fun, fun. fun. Always yeah. grand when that happens. So I'm not looking to make a super dark red. I am just looking to mute the color down slightly. So not quite as much as the tongue, but exactly, but more than what what you would normally get out of the the little bottle. There you go. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, I it's let's okay. just see I if you put a question something. in chat. Yeah. I all right. So I got to answer this question, or I have to try to say this question. Oh, is this the one I'm seeing right now? Yeah. Um, they want us to pronounce. Candy corn a ropier, ra. Candy corn a roper, -a. for entertainment purposes. I am here to Candy entertain. Candy corn a Oh, you put the emphasis on that syllable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Candy That's corn how I would read. Ro a Candy corn yeah. a roperia. Yeah. That feels very Italian. Candy corn. Well, I am Italian. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I default to my second language, yo. Hey, listen, uh, I think since if that's your second language, then you've done a very good job because now yeah. it sounds authentic. 
Cool. So there you go. For your entertainment, Candy Corn or Roparia. And I just saw you putting a little bit of water. So doing lots of water. Yeah, we're going to make this a nice, nice thin glaze. Thin like skim milk. Ooh, this red is tenacious. A little bit more red water into my red. This is not the greatest... The, the the greatest glaze in the world is his only attribute. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, there we Sorry, go. Sorry, whenever I hear tenacious, that's immediately what I think of. <laughs> Fair. Okay. okay, and then with that, I'm going to go in and we're going to start painting the tentacles. All right. Have a brush. And the important thing is to keep this moving along because you don't want to do too thick of a layer of this glaze. And that way, the shadow work we did will play through a lot better when it's just a thin coat. Yeah, I mean, we did all this this hardcore work to get mm -hmm. all these details. And now, now it's all going to hopefully pay off. Oh, it will. Uh, See? That sounded a little more ominous than I think you oh, wanted I'm sorry. to sound. I but I'm here for it. Oh, it, oh, it, oh, it will. will. Oh, it will. It's just the, the quality of the... the oh, it will. <laughs> like, <laughs> Sorry. Not meant to no. be sinister. I mean, I mean, once again, it is... Tis the season. Wah. Might as well have some fun with it, right? Right. Exactly. Um... Uh, Lizard Tails wants to know if they're candy corn ropers, why is one purple? Oh, that's Helen. That's Helen. Yep. So that uh, Helen is not a candy corn roper. You are no. you are correct there. But Helen is uh, our inspiration. Yeah, I guess you could put it. So Helen was a mini that V painted a while ago and has been sitting on V's desk. And we've just enjoyed the quality of Helen's smile. Yes. And then uh, recently when we were coming up. And so people have been asking us to also paint a roper, um, paint paint Helen again. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't want to just paint Helen again. And then when this idea came up of painting a mini to uh, donate to the stream happening for uh, the fundraiser, the candy corn roper came up and mm -hmm. it was just too perfect. So, uh, so no, Helen is not a candy corn roper. Helen is, is the a OG. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. She's a girl. And I use her for a lot of social media posts about paint and slay because, you know, it's just, I mean, look at this smile. How could you? It's the smile. She's so photogenic. It is 100% the smile. It is amazing. It totally is. Yeah. It is so, definitely yeah. one of those monsters that, although when you meet them in D&D, &D, they are super horrific and mm -hmm. uh, very, very deadly. They're just smiling at you. Exactly. I'm just smiling. All right. This is the point where I have to make sure that I haven't missed an entire section of a right. tentacle because I didn't turn the mini in a specific way because round true. things. It because is so round true. things. Because round. <laughs> and honestly, that's where going, um, taking the brush with the grain of the segments does help. Mm. So... I go back in and just sort of like quickly run it across with the grain of it. But you can see as this dries, look at that. We have all the details still showing yeah. through. There's this nice red licorice red. Oh, I'm going to have to go get some Twizzlers after this. Right. So I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do on Monday for weekly patronage because okay. I have a stream on Halloween. Yay. And... We already kind of half dressed. Well, we dressed up for um, sketching hour on Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not someone who like does cosplay or has a lot of costumes, so I really don't have a lot of. I really don't have any costumes, so I did my low rent Orkira, which was super fun. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to just dress up again because it'll just be low rent Orkira again. So I was trying okay. to come up with other things to do uh, for that stream, and I feel like. It is very on brand for us to talk about candy. Yeah. It is very, let me clarify. It is very on brand for me to talk about talk candy. Talk about candy, yes, correct, yes. <laughs> 
And I noticed uh, the last time I was at the store, because we do need to pick up a little bit of candy in case some trick-or-treaters come by, Mm because there may not be a ton, but we need some. Right. And I'm like, but I don't want to buy a lot of candy because then we're just going to have a lot of candy in the house. And then, then you know what? You can't waste candy. You have to eat the candy. Right. And uh, I can't be eating that much candy. But I noticed they had a lot of things that were individuals. For example, they actually had um, popcorn balls, individual popcorn what? balls. Oh, wow. Now they're huge. They're they're like softball size popcorn balls. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could get a single one, which I'm like, OK, that's cool. That and is so cool. I think I'm just going to uh, get a bunch of, you know, like. A uh, Reese's peanut butter cup, a uh, Snickers, a uh, popcorn ball, uh, you know, single ones of these. Mm-hmm. And, you know, instead of voting for what patron I'm going to take care of on weekly patronage, we'll vote for, you know, what candy is the best. Oh, I like it. You know, and I'll just That's have fun. them all there to try, try for them. science. Yes, for science. To tr- Always for to science. Try to give away or to try to show for um you know, for visual reference for those who might not know. Mm-hmm. And I am I'm not going to include the single coffee crisp that I have left. Oh. Because that's that's those for are me. precious. Those are precious. I I only have one left. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I will I be it. eating that one on Halloween. I've been saving that one for Aww. Halloween, but that I'm not gonna I'm not okay. going to uh just scarf that. That's mm-hmm. that's going to be enjoyed. That's fair. That is totally fair. I don't remember why I got off in this tangent, except that it's very. What you were going to do for, for weekly patronage, right? Let's let's start it. Yeah, I don't remember why I was starting to talk about weekly patronage, but eh, that's okay. How are we doing with questions? Uh, Speaking you know what? That'd be a good thing for me to do. Except I'm trying to get this this curve right here. So give me a, totally give me a second. Totally fair. Give me, give me a second. Totally fair. I get I it. started on the easier side for me where the tentacles oh. are a little bit further apart. And now uh-huh. I'm on the ones in where there's two of them that are shaking each tight. other's hands. Yeah. 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 Always fun. Always fun. Um, the Mall's Revenge asks, any advice for would-be mini painter who has bad vision and shaky hands? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. we've we've talked about this before because guess what? There's a lot of us that are in the same the same boat. I I've definitely, I can talk at length about the vision part of it. I definitely suggest if you have the money for it, um, there are these lights that have a magnifying glass in them. They're they're round. Um, and I think they might be jewelers related. Um, it's been a while since I bought mine. And I bought mine specifically because I need to make oboe reeds. Uh, and that that's a lot of, fine yeah. detail work the same way mini painting is and that way i don't have to squint and i don't have to struggle because it's hard um if you can't get something like that the the best thing that i recommend is try to continue to hold the mini as close to your face instead of bringing your face to the mini because yeah. it can it can be very tempting to lean in a way that can be very difficult to uh, maintain for a long period of time and you can you can definitely wrench backs and stuff so yeah. those so, are my suggestions here's what you can do most of more most importantly when it comes to painting your minis lighting is crucial and key um, if you have a room in your house where you can paint and it is a lot of natural light that is the best place you can paint if vision is an issue for you if that is not an option for you you want to make sure that you get a light and they have so many great lamp lights now that are led driven You want the LEDs that have the different options of cool, warm, and natural. And then you just set it right to that natural light and that will help you out as well. Usually those lamps can be anywhere from like $20. You can get it really pricey for up to $60. But LED lights that have a natural light option are also fantastic if you don't have natural light. In terms of further enhancement of magnifying, if you don't want to get one of those special lights that have, because those can easily start at $100 if not more. If you want to have something with a magnifying factor to it, you can actually go to your drugstore and get their reader glasses, which start about three bucks each, and just grab a couple pairs of those, 
hook them on the end of your nose. The nice thing is because their glasses, they stay on your face more comfortably. And you can use that to actually magnify what you're seeing. Now let's talk about the whole shaking hands thing. That is absolutely a thing that many, many, many painters that I know deal with, whether it's because of fatigue or whether it's because of, you know, hypoglycemia, they forgot to eat or things like if I take my inhaler, I know I'm going to be shaking. Um, so the best thing to do with that is you want to bring the mini in closer to your body. I'm going to back up so you can see this. So right now I'm painting with the mini out about this far because I'm hooking it under the camera. Normally when I paint minis, I try and keep it so that my elbows lock on the sides of my rib cage. And then I bring my hands together as if in prayer. And that helps stabilize your hands and make it more secure for you to paint and also help you visually at the same time. So those would be my recommendations for you when it comes to making sure you can see well and making sure you can keep your things stable. Any point where you can sort of lock against your body, I use my elbows as an anchor. You'll see when I go to do fine detail work, I use my pinkies as anchors against my opposite hand. So locking and then also lighting really are what will help you most. So hopefully there you go. that gives you a good idea of what you can get into. Yeah, that reader glass idea is a really mm -hmm. good idea. Yeah. And it's also very budget friendly and you can also fine tune it. So if you need to really see something better, you can get a higher um, is it prescription. I guess they would be. I mean, even yeah. if they're generic reader glasses, yeah, that's just they would it. be a prescription. Um, so you can go higher if you have like really fine detail you want to see. If it's just like you generally want to see just a little bit better, start at the lowest grade first before upgrading to the higher ones because you don't want to strain your eyes at the same time and take them off when you don't need them. That's the other thing. Don't keep the reader glasses on. Don't use the magnifier all the time because that's actually going to weaken your eyes. Use it as needed, not consistently. Oh, I remember how I got off topic because we were talking oh. about uh, Twizzlers and Red Licorice. <gasps> there we go. That'll all right. Much. Any other questions from the chat? Oh, uh, yeah. I was just showing off uh, <laughs> my... my uh, nice. I'm pretty happy with that red. Yeah. That's looking good. I'll let that sit and dry for a second. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Robert W6 asks... The game color range is more glossy than the model range, or is it just the light conditions? It's probably the light in the yeah. camera. Nope, um, he's correct. Or they are correct, yeah. I should say. Uh, the model line tends to be more matte from Vallejo. The, the game color line that does have a slight gloss to it for some of them when they dry, um, which is why I do find it's helpful to have on hand a, like I said, I use the Mod Podge matte, uh, matte varnish style when you go to seal your miniatures up. Um, but yes, they tend to be a little bit more vivid, with a touch more, um, I wouldn't say gloss. It's not the right word. More of a satin finish to some of the colors. Sorry, I'm trying to wash off this brush and I've forgotten how much red decides that it likes oh, to stick around. Oh, red sticks around forever. Ah, all right. It's going to hang out uh, with you for a while. It will. Uh, Lizard Tails asks, question, do candy corn ropers taste like candy corn? Hmm. I think if you, uh, yes, <laughs> unless you're eating the, the tentacles and then they taste like licorice. <laughs> there you go. They taste okay. exactly, exactly like one of these. There um, you go. Ta -da! Mm -hmm. All righty. You ready for some fun? We're going to get to the candy corn colors. I mean, I've been having fun this whole time, but yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for candy corn colors. Let's do this. All right. So we're going to start first with the, I'm shaking orange when I need yellow lady. Um, so get that sun yellow, which is basically a classic primary color yellow. If you're not using the Vallejos. And let's see. Oh, um, Cypher. No, these are not contrast paints. Um, I don't have any contrast paints. Uh, however, a lot of the techniques that I do can end up having things look like the contrast paint lines from uh, Citadel without having to buy them. Just saying, I have so many paints, I, I can't buy more paints. If they're sent to me, sure, I will try them out and share happily, but I cannot justify going out and purchasing paints when I have hundreds of bottles to work with. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating. Before the show, we were talking about uh, picking up new supplies and 
Yeah, I'm I'm definitely at that point where I'm like, oh, do I really want to buy more brushes? Do I really want to yeah. do this? I'm all for know? brushes. It's the paints where I'm like, those suckers stick around for a while. All right, That's so we're going to do straight up sun yellow. We're going to thin it out to be like skim milk, and then we're going to put it on to the lower portion, portion of the roper. But we want to make sure we target it. Where did I put its delineation? Hold on. Corner of the mouth. So we're going to use the corner of the mouth here. So yellow goes from here down to the base. All right. Okay. And it mm. is kind of nice that sun yellow oh, just I, just really matches the bottom yeah. of the horn. That's like, just that it. is it's pretty much exact. Spot on. Uh, but again, the important thing is that we make this a very thin glaze. So all the shadow work we did last week will play through. And I think I saw someone asking about cost of minis. Yep. So Lizard yes. Tales asks, minis are kind of expensive. And since I have no experience painting them, I'm worried about buying one and trying to paint it only to end up with it looking hideous due to my lack of skills. Oh. Aww. Are there any mm -hmm. other toys you'd recommend as cheap alternatives to practice yeah. painting before graduating to proper minis? Absolutely. Go to Amazon, search fantasy miniatures, and you will see for about 20 bucks, I think it's something ridiculous, like either 50 or 100 minis. Um, they're little plastic oh, figurines. Damn. It's like things like ogres, fairies, unicorns, wizards. It's it's a very specific pack that I'm thinking of. If I remember, I will tweet it um, if I can find it again. But Amazon has a bunch of these bucket fantasy creature things. Um, some are have like a more like, you know, graveyard vampires, werewolf type of situ situation. Um, the other one, like I said, is more like wizards, fairies, dragons, unicorns. Um, those are great to work with. However... They are a different type of plastic than miniatures traditionally are. You will definitely want to be sure you get a good primer onto those minis paint wise. You can also, as an extra insurance policy, which I have done with those in the past, is I will mix in, I'm going to say it again, get used to it, folks, the Mod Podge Ultra. Uh, get the mat and mix it into your paint, and that will help it adhere better to the plastic as well. But you will also need to wash those particular miniatures in Dawn dish detergent to get yourself the uh, release agent off of the surface of the plastic. But those are a great way to start practicing, get a feel for it. You can even use craft paints on them, especially if you get the Mod Podge Ultra and just get a feel for whether you like the concept of painting miniatures in of itself. Your other option is to see if your local game store has mini painting days, sessions, what have you. And oftentimes those are a great way to see if you like painting minis for a low cost out of pocket fee on your end. That's how I painted my first mini was yeah. I went to the my friendly local game store and they had a whole section set up to sit. And it was basically if you bought the mini at the store, they'd let you just sit at their paint station and use all their paints and their brushes and everything. Yeah. So you you mentioned the corner of the mouth as the upper portion. Mm -hmm. Is there a, a bottom that we're stopping at or is the whole bottom? It's getting the going yellow? to be where you see this line start kicking in. See there? So basically the bottom of the roper. The base of the roper, yeah. You don't want to take it all, all the way right. down to the bottom because we're going to do that pink cotton candy base. But it goes down to the bottom of the roper's edge. Awesome. Yeah. That's kind of what I thought, but... Yeah. We were having a good discussion about minis and I didn't want to interrupt. No, it's so totally like, I'll just, I'll just go around the top. I got plenty of, plenty yeah. of stuff to work on. Oh, there's plenty of play on this roper for sure. Also, I didn't notice it until literally just now, which means mm. it's 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 fine and it's probably actually a good seam line. There's literally a seam line on mine at the corner of the mouth. Yeah. That goes all the way around the back of this mini, which makes it really easy to have a line to follow to yep. paint inside. <laughs> yep. There's a reason why I said that that's, point of the mini. That's amazing. It's actually segmented, which is quite nice. But you can um, see we have uh, the shadow work to our advantage playing through. Yeah. Because we're the glaze. And we have a question from a Fool Squeaky asks, do you find inks or washes more useful? Depends on mm. what you're doing. Yeah. It absolutely depends on what you're doing. Um, I would not recommend using full throttle inks on your minis as a wash. Please don't do that. Don't do that. Um, inks are... It, far more potent in pigmentation. So if you are tempted to use an ink as a wash, 
you better be thinning that sucker out until it looks like bone broth and then use it as a wash. Okay. Um, really depends on the effect I'm going for, the color intensity I want and all of that jazz. So I know it seems like a cop out, but it seriously, it depends on what the project is. I mean, it's not a cop out when the, the honest answer is it depends. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, you, you don't want to lead someone astray just because you want to give them a, you know, yeah. the clear answer. Yeah. And the, the thing I like about washes, like, so I've got a couple of washes now that I have gone ahead and purchased for fun. But if you take a look at the list of stuff that we say to pick up in order to join us, it doesn't include any washes. And that's because you can just make a wash using any of the paints that are mm-hmm. in the the kit and i and as you can see we're i mean it's not a wash that we're using right now it's it's a glaze but it's the same kind of idea of taking the paint and turning it into um something slightly different and i really appreciate how useful that is how easy yeah. that is and how it gives you a lot of control over what kind of wash and or glaze or you know, whatever you're using looks like. Yeah. I mean, quite technically, you could paint a whole bunch of minis with six basic colors, brown, black, white, red, blue, yellow. And it can get you to other various color combinations just with those six paints. So if you're looking to get into things, you can buy those six colors and still be able to effectively paint miniatures. It's just a matter of learning how to mix your paint colors together to get different tones and everything like that. Just having one of those color wheels next to you Mm -hmm. all the time. Be like, okay, what am I adding now? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm almost done going around with yellow. Yeah, I think I'm almost done. I'm definitely doing the circle around and then see either a spot I missed or a spot that I actually want a little more yellow on. Exactly. Uh, Yep. But, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. Rah! But ta-da. <laughs> she kind of, the roper kind of looks like they have a skirt on right now. Right? <laughs> I got a little bit of yellow. I didn't want to get yellow. So I'm just going to take some water and pull that away. Oh, good. I caught it in time. All right. Oh, and we're going to have people coming in from the game as we're Ooh. we're about halfway through our show already. I know. Holy mackerel. Um, so if, if you are coming on in, welcome. We are finishing up the candy corn ropers that are not only Halloween themed, but are going to be uh, giveaways for the raffles for the Ta-da! stream that's coming up in an hour for... Um, the Women Against Violence Against Women um, Rape Crisis Center, which is an amazing group that does uh, really good work with people in need. Uh, all the donations for the game that are happening right there. Still, right there. Um, yep, yep. And one of the things that you can get is one of our ropers. Hey! Yay! <laughs> and no, um, I'm not nervous. Not nervous. Not at all nervous. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You're absolutely right. That doesn't stop me from being nervous, but I appreciate I know, you I nonetheless. Know. I 100% <laughs> appreciate you. This is mm. this is my performance anxiety coming through in mini form. Oh, Literally mini form. <laughs> right? Okay, so we're going to go now to Orange Fire. Orange Which fire. is beautifully toned for classic candy corn color. And thin that out as well. Orange fire. There you are. Yep. Nice and thinned out. Skim milk again. That is not skim milk. That is still too thick. Okay. Yeah, we don't get to use orange nearly no. enough. So I was kind of excited to do this one. It's like, oh, we're playing with orange. There we go. And now this time we're going to use the eyelid. Okay, so the corner of the eyelid here is where our line is going to be this time around. Okay. So right there. Corner of eyelid. Yep. Actually, I'm going to... All right. 
Oh, Legendary Dragon 75 asks, is wash like a different shade of paint? Wash um, is a different consistency of pigment than paint. It's your concentrations that are sort of being shifted around. Paint is uh, full opacity. So you start getting into transparent and translucent as you work your way into washes and inks and glazes. Now, how clear of a delineation... Well, we're we're doing a pretty clear line between the yellow and the orange, right? We're, we're yeah, keeping that yeah. as separated as possible. Yeah. I mean, even on, like, actual candy corns, you can see it kind of wobbles a little bit. Oh, yeah. So do the best you can to keep it kind of one from the other. Oh. The tentacle pities are bugging me today. <laughs> yeah, this the orange is going to be the most uh, challenging, I think. Yep, agreed. Uh, K. Bob asks, "Do you prefer to copy a color scheme or freestyle it?" Honestly, depends on the project. Here I go again. <laughs> uh, sometimes I do like to work directly off of the official art. Uh, other times, like today, ta-da. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> it's fun just to sort of do your own thing. Um, like I've done things like I've taken an Umber Hulk, but painted it to look like a scarab beetle. And it actually came out looking really cool. So yeah, I think it just depends on my mood, what I feel like doing, how, how true to form of the monster I want to be, or if I feel like being a little bit more irreverent and clever with it. I am still enjoying... Uh following official art i guess you could say mm -hmm. you know or like we obviously paint outside the lines all the time but yeah. like following i'm following along with v because i'm also learning but like i think i'm still in the trying to paint it to look like the thing camp yeah. but i'm i'm still learning i'm still experimenting and then when we do stuff like this it just gets super fun yeah i'm definitely gonna have to move to a smaller brush yeah, I'm going to need a around brush the around the um, tentacles in the face. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm already, I'm already there. Ah, <laughs> hey, gotcha. Um, ooh, here's an interesting question. Uh, Caleb Marin says, "Dry brushing on baked clay." I'm making. <laughs> I'm making severed fingers and toes for my sister's Halloween party and wanted to okay. make them a bit dirty. Any tips or ideas? Ooh. First off, that um, sounds awesome. That, that sounds like a lot of fun. If you want to have it look more like dirt smudges and such, get an old toothbrush and um, wet it down with paint. And then you take the brush and your thumb and you just basically, come here, you, you pull across the brush, like aim it down and pull the brush like this towards it and let all the paint flick down onto the item so it looks more like um, dirt speckles that way. Mm. You might find that more dirtifying <laughs> if you want. It's a word. It's now a yeah, word. It's a word now. I said it. There you go. Yep. Copyright B. Hmm. So I would recommend doing that, especially because clay can be very porous. Um, so what you dry brush may actually not show as well is the only little bit of caution I would give on that one. But that definitely sounds really cool. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm a fan of this idea for sure. Yeah. In fact, uh, you know, I'm a fan of it and I'm, I'm not even into yours. the scary parts of Halloween. <laughs> oh. oh yeah. I'm definitely gonna need a detail brush soon. This is getting to be a little too fussy. Yeah, I might have gone for the detail brush a little too soon than I needed to, but I'd rather yeah, I'd rather no, be extra totally. cautious. Absolutely understand that one. Okay. You know, because I'm nervous because someone's going to get this mini. And I want it to be good. It is good. And I'm going to I'm going to keep it good by using a detail brush. That's how this is going to work. Oh, around the back, I definitely need to go higher, though. I didn't realize I didn't realize how low I had gone on the orange on the back until I started using the detail brush. I'm like, oh, wait, I've got yeah, a lot i got to fill in there. Better that way, though. Oh, yeah. 
Because then you can bring it up as opposed to you can't go back down. <laughs> nope. Nope. Once it's there, it's there forever. Mm. Or until you take Stay it off. Or whatever. Yeah. Oh, for sure. right. Oh, Caleb Marin says, thank you. I'm into the spooks lately. I mean, tis the season. Also, I'm I'm just fascinated by the idea of not just the fingers and uh, the mm -hmm. you know all that, but doing it in clay. Yeah, like that. Just I I like the tactile feel of clay. I I've very few times been able to actually play with clay because you know I'm a musician. I'm not an artist, but every time I have, I've been I've been very entertained. It's just it's like play doh for adults, and I love it. Mm hmm. And if if I could be an artist, a, a physical media artist in any way, I would be very tempted to work with clay the whole time. <laughs> okay, let me switch brushes for just a moment because that's that's a lot of space on the back I still have to cover. I got quiet. I was concentrating. <laughs> Ah, it's okay. Oh, hi, TTRP Gifts. Welcome. Hello. Welcome to the the final hour of our Candy Corn Roper. Ba -da -da -da. I am excited. Ba -da -da -ba -ba. Yep, my brain just went there. Yep, that's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yeah. A little easier to see are. on the back side. <laughs> I'm going to twist and turn in a, in a weird way as I'm holding this thing. <laughs> <laughs> the colors definitely pop on camera. Like, the not all of the detail that's coming through with the these being glazes is coming mm -hmm. through on the camera, but the yeah. the red, uh, the orange, and the yellow are absolutely like, look! Look at me! Yay! Look at me, I'm a roper in disguise. <laughs> Parents, make sure to check your candy for ropers. <laughs> oh my god! Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, I so love obviously that that's become a meme this year. Me too. So obviously, we have the white cap left, and yes, this was technically dry brushed with some white, but we're going to make this a little bit more white than it is right now by taking the dead white and thinning it out to a very, very, very thin glaze. And applying it to the top portion of the roper body. All right. Dead white, you said? Dead white, yep. Dead white. You're dead right on the dead white. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah. Yeah. Nope, nope. That, that's, I've used that paper towel as much as I possibly can. <laughs> Your bed's about to fall out. Don't do that. I'm sorry, I'm just having too much fun seeing the one next to the other right now. Right? <laughs> oh, it's looking Lord. great. It's fun. This is a lot of fun. Helps to put water in the eyedropper. How are we doing? All right, I think that's gonna work. <laughs> I just saw in chat, uh... Tom1971 says, could there be a tribe of ropers that camouflage themselves in fall leaves? Oh, absolutely. Ooh, yeah, why not? Absolutely. I mean, ropers don't have to stay. In, they're classically in caves, but they don't got to stay there. You know, they can go out into the wider world and be, uh, they can be sneaky. <laughs> it's a roper infiltration. <laughs> I'm now I'm now picturing like green ropers to hang out in trees and um and yeah like fall colored ropers but also um ropers that instead of looking like rocks they look more like pine needles and mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff I'm I'm here for it I'm here for all of it Oh no not getting the white on the tentacle not getting the white on the tentacle <laughs> Nope, Not nope, getting nope. the white on the tentacle. And a little of the white is going to go a very long way, is the other thing. Mm. Oh, 
<laughs> Sorry. I I'm normally much better about like the talking and the being on stream no, and everything. I um, and we were def like I'm half joking about the I am nervous about someone else getting this mini, but I I am legitimately like someone else is getting this mini. And so like when it's my own mini and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, I could have done that better or I'm still working on that. And like, it's OK. But now it's like, well, someone else is going to get this mini and they're going to donate to charity to get this mini. And I've never done that before. And so I am. It's not that I haven't been serious this whole time, but like I'm extra serious right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. I need to. Step up my mini game. I didn't put even know it was a thing. Put you in a different headspace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Definitely more of the headspace of of don't don't get white on the on the <laughs> on the tentacles. Don't get white on the tentacles. That's fair. But we do have questions fair. coming in, and so Yay. I should I uh, should look. <laughs> uh, Tom continues with, they just wait for you to put a star or an angel on on them, and then they attack. <laughs> the Christmas tree ones. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh, yeah. And uh, it looks like, are are you uh, are you donating to the raffle to join on in? Because that's awesome. It is. Yes. And if you don't win the Ropers, I mean, there's just tons of amazing raffle prizes. Yeah, absolutely. There is a lot to win. So definitely if you've got if you've got at least 10 bucks, you can enter and not only do you get a chance to win all sorts of fun stuff, but um you immediately get well, I don't know if it's immediately. You but you will get a a prize package of of digital funness. I I don't remember exactly what's in it. But I know um, the last see, time they did this there was a ton in there. Let's see. I think I grabbed it and should cycle through soon. Yeah, so it's it a screen. it's a bunch of TTRPG yeah. stuff. Should pop up in a couple frames. The white is definitely sinking right. into the crevices a lot more than the orange or the yellow did. It appears to be that way, just because white is very good at obliterating a lot faster. So oh, what you can do is, as okay. it dries, you can go back. There it is. There it is. Right there. Ta da! Hey. Um, as it dries, you can actually go back over and intensify it by doing sort of a light dry brush again on the higher portions like I just did. Okay. So see, it'll keep the details, but yeah. Yeah, because I'm watching as it dries and it's almost like veining out on the top mm. in a way that I am not as happy with. I mean, it's a different effect, which would be really cool mm. if I wasn't so proud of all of the detail oh. work that we did beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm thinking that's going to be it for me for white perhaps i'm almost done i'm also i'm also going back in with a detail brush and like getting into those little crevices and trying to like pull yeah. some out at the last minute like no don't be in there and it's kind of working yeah um hey martin <laughs> I don't know if Martin has access to the charity link. It looks like they tried to share the charity link from uh, Weva, but it did the asterisk thing again. Was oh yes, yesterday. Martin has access to it. In our okay. little backstage document at the top, Yay. there is there is a link. Um, oh my god, this is just cracking me up right now. <laughs> yeah, it's looking it's looking really good. There we go. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Martin. We appreciate you. Yep, that's the link to the Tiltify where you can see all of the rewards. You can see um, all of the fun things that you can donate to to support the players uh, or support the DM. Yay. Oh. Let me grab. There we go. Okay. So ah. don't. Oh, I thought you were screaming something like half. And I'm like, don't. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just making the ah for the rover. Ah. All right. So all right, I'm going to take. Well, I'm going to take what's left of our white now. And I'm going to add a little touch of blue because I'm going for a sky blue. For oh, our okay. sky blue rock candy. A touch of blue. I might actually do like an even like a little touch of green, dark green to that. I don't know how close dark green is to you, Lauren. For you. Um it it's very close. I'm is there a reason you're adding the dark green? Because I want this to be a little bit more candy colored as opposed to because this is coming out a very periwinkle sky blue. And yeah. I want this to be almost like the um 
you know, comically sky blue in a way. So I'm going to add oh, a touch okay. of the, oh, no, we don't. There we go. Uh, dark green or goblin green? Dark green. <laughs> dark green. Oh, yeah, because Goblin Green's got that yellow in it, doesn't it? Yeah, you're going to end up with something quite different. All right. Tiny bit of green. Here we go. Blonk. Let's see if this gets me to where I want it to be. You might even want more. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay, okay. Oh, no. I'm going to have to start over. <laughs> No, that wasn't what you were going for? <laughs> My glaze is just like totally, because I forgot they were so runny, they just did a fun little... Oh, okay. I'm going to start with a fresh plate. <laughs> there is a reason I haven't picked up my uh, paper plate just yet, and it is exactly oh, I mean, for that it's reason. it's cool looking. Don't get me wrong. It's a really neat looking effect right now, but that's not the color I want to put on my rock candy. <laughs> that's not what we were aiming for. No. Ah! Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Martin. There's also a exclamation mark donate Lovely. command so that uh, those of you at home who are in the chat can join in and just exclamation mark donate and get yourself that Sweet. link. And those uh, that command will be live throughout the game that's happening in 45 minutes. So you can join in at any time. Oh, I just saw a place in where there's orange where there shouldn't be orange. Well, poopy. Oops. Mm, let's see if I can... <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at a plate where there's orange where there shouldn't be orange. So, hey. Oh, I'm looking at a mini where she's I'm like, oh, no. A little oh, bit of, dear. A little bit of orange on a on a, a tentacle. Oh, dear. On the underside of a tentacle. So it's not so bad. But yeah. still, it is not what I'm aiming for. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> you are supposed to be red licorice, not orange licorice. But I mean, you know, that's not such a bad thing. Orange licorice. I thought that would taste good. I wonder it's what taste that would be, actually, now that I think peach. about it. Peach. I don't I would think know if I've... peach. Huh. I don't know why I go peach. I... I don't think it'd be like classic orange. I think because, you know, licorice is known for its unique flavors. I think they would go with something like peach. Yeah. I have never had, but I would definitely try. There you go. Okay, there we go. Am I really good? Hmm. I'm getting into color theory mode. <laughs> Question colon says, you need little mini plates. <laughs> right? Nor normally, this, this regular paper plate works out really, really well. But yeah, I've, I've definitely been being extra, extra, extra cautious because of the fact that we've got glazes and mm -hmm. runniness happening. Yeah, I just got a little exuberant. And my guess is this is going to be these the big pillars. Yes, the three, yep, the stalagmites. Two, three, okay. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. And while I start to work on the, the candy, the candy corn, uh, if you do have any questions in chat, remember you can always put question in big capital letters at the front of your questions so Martin can grab it so that when I take a break from being nervous about painting this mini, because, you know... I will look at our little backstage document and get to your question. Uh, if you do have any idle champions questions, if you do have any mini painting questions, if you if you have uh, level twenty D and D questions, mm -hmm. right? That's we need I B actually... Dave in the chat for that one. <laughs> I mean, B Dave is the expert, but I've got a fair amount of experience with. Uh, with playing and uh, DMing, level, nowhere near as much as B-Dave, obviously, yeah. uh, but playing and DMing at high levels, including level 20. So I'm just saying, because uh, he's, he's running this one today and he's running the one for us next week, which is level 17. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, and it's, it's been nice to have so many, like one shots that are high level are fun yeah. and everything, but because they're one shots, they do tend to be a little bit more on the ridiculous side or on the, um, you know, not everybody gets a chance to kind of do everything. Mm -hmm. But with Idol Champions Presents, it's been super fun because you get, you know, five, six episodes with the same people to play as those characters. Yeah. And uh, level 17 is, you're basically at the point, you don't have your capstone 
but but otherwise you're basically at the point in where you've you've got all your powers you've got uh really high level spells you get a chance to do a lot of really cool things that you don't necessarily get a chance to do in other campaigns uh yeah. unless they've gone out of their way to go to that high of a level and it is it is super fun like when i when i was on court of the raven queen th there was two different things that happened that i never got a chance to do in a game before as Orkira, despite the fact that on uh, Heroes of the Plains, we went to level 20 and stuck at level 20 for a while. So, you know, just getting a chance to do some of that stuff. And there's still stuff. There's still stuff I haven't done yet. I have yet to cast Mass Heal. Ooh. Which is kind of, you know, a cornerstone of, of healer cleric fun. But I haven't... We we stopped. <laughs> um, Shaka saved us from needing to be mass healed. He he got that final wonderful blow. But right. if it, if if Shaka hadn't uh, kicked butt in that moment and it had gotten around to Orkira, that was going to be what I was going to do. So I'm not mad about it because Shaka it got the, the awesome moment. Yeah, yeah, and he deserved it. But so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun to be able to pull out those those super duper powers. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Ah, let's see. Um, ooh, I'm going to try to pronounce this name. Chir this, is, this probably says something. Uh, Trapanga Spink. Okay. Asks, how long until the streaming survive? Uh, how long until the streaming? Um, survivor start using voice chat. Sorry about the weirdness. Ah, that makes sense. No, you're doing okay. The stream, uh, streaming for survivors event is in 40 minutes from mm -hmm. now at, at the sound of the tone. The charity stream will be 39 minutes <laughs> from the sound of the tone. Boop. So there you go. 39 minutes from now. It is at two o'clock Pacific um, other times in other places. <laughs> there you go. All right, so that is the three rock candies. I'm Go almost on. done. I'm getting the, yeah. the back of this this one totally and cool. trying not to get any on the yellow. Totally happen. cool. And then we're going to make some pink. Pink! Pink! For the cotton candy. There we go. There we go. There we go. Ha 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 ha. Yay. All right, how do we pink? Uh, red and white. More white than red. Okay. Whoops. Stay. And also, um, water this down? Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm, I'm actually running a little low on white. Oof. Oh, yeah. That was a very small touch of white or red that I needed added to my white to get to that cotton candy pink. Literally just a little bit on the uh, tip of the bristle of your brush to get to that pink. Oh yeah, that oh, that looks white on the camera. Really? I'm I'm seeing a little bit of the pink, but okay. I I can see what you mean. Like it is there. a very 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 pale pink. Very pale. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Thin that out as well. <laughs> Oh, I've got to look at this without the sh the shine of my light. Oh, no. The pink really is deceptive when the light is shining completely yeah. on it. Oof. Yeah, it will be. And again, you want to make sure this one's nice and thin, too, because it's so pale. And this is for the base, right? Yep. So it looks like a cotton candy base. I love it. It's been a while since I've had any cotton candy. I don't think of it the same. Um, oh, here's an Idol Champions question. Gelatinous Rubik's Cube asks, I'm down to three uh, time gate pieces. Should I save to unlock Mert or unlock another hero? I need four to be able to unlock the first core. Thanks in advance. Ooh. If you have... Everything else you need to unlock Mert, my suggestion, unlock Mert. 
save save up and unlock merch. If you still need some stuff, um, then you might want to wait and do another champion. Um, I would also say go ahead and unlock Mert because this weekend is the the last weekend of the event. And so you kind of want to, if, if you can, focus on the event to gear up the event champions. And next weekend is a free time gate weekend. So you've got other things to focus on. Is that the right way of putting it? Focus on? I don't know. But that's my suggestion. Uh, I don't think there's a wrong answer there, but that's that's what I that's what I would do. Save up for Mert. Because mm-hmm. then unlocking Mert gets you a lot of options. Yeah. I'm going to try to do the major parts of this base and then I'm going to have to move to a detail brush. Because mm-hmm. I don't want to get cotton candy pink on my roper. That's fair. That is totally fair. That's a weird sentence I just said. I don't want to get cotton candy on my roper. Okay. <laughs> I love D&D. I love D&D and the, the way you, you have know, to say you weird things. Never thought you'd say and yet here we are. And that and yet here we are. Okay. Uh, question Colin asks, what can we expect to see on Be Never Ending VOD after watching the charity stream? Uh, this week we are... It, it is technically a bye week. There will be a stream, but it is not an episode. Uh, our grand finale is next week. Uh, but this week I am hanging out with the amazing Brandy Rose. Uh, they are going to be asking me questions and we're going to be getting questions from chat specifically about running the uh, a couple of the adventures from Journey Through the Radiant Citadel on a stream and things that we had to change and alter and you know what we kept and what we what had to change and uh fun things like that we're going to be focusing on uh the demon and hollow mine since that's the adventure that they kind of just finished because we talked about um written in blood there we go i'm like it's something in blood something in blood something in blood and i had a bunch of other uh, titles in my head, but we talked about written in blood already on one of the previous bye weeks. So yeah, so definitely uh, you can watch that on the VOD. And then the the important thing is next week, um, for the grand finale. There you go. Mm. All right, we're slowly but surely getting there. I might do a little bit more, but it needs to dry first to the cotton candy and the rock stuff. Yeah, I'm working on yeah. some of what these. What washes do you have again? Um, Basically everything but Null Oil. I, not okay. everything, but like okay. the standards, except for So Null you Noil. have like the um, Drakenhof Nightshade and the yes. Karaberg Crimson? Yes. We're going to do something with those then. But for okay. now, while that dries, I'm going to go to my Mod Podge Ultra Gloss and I'm going to paint the eyeball. With a mm. clean brush and the mouth as well to get the glossiness started up on those. And I'm going to finish getting around this base. And I just Ooh. open up the cap and I will dip my brush in. That's what I do to get to it. That has been really useful. Yeah. That, that trick, not having to spray. Oh, yeah. That's been real nice. Gives you a lot more control too. Oh yeah, especially for uh, doing an eyeball. Mm-hmm. Eyeballs it makes such a difference when you can get the mouth and the eyeball all glossified. Mm. It's fun. And is it the inside of the mouth? I'm doing the gum line and the inside of the mouth. It just gives it an okay. extra touch of creepiness, and on the teeth too, as you know, saliva. Okay. I think that the teeth were my main yeah. question, just to make sure. Hee <laughs> Here we go. Excuse me, pardon me. Sorry, I got quiet again, but I'm looking no, for it's fair. these last little spots. I think, I think I'm good. Sweet. Look at all those colors. I love it. <laughs> all right. 
right. And now I get to catch up with Mod Podge gloss. Wee. Yeah, you want to grab the red label, not the. This is what this is the my one complaint. The gold label is not the gloss. You would that was such a missed marketing beat. Gold gloss. <laughs> that makes sense. I have grabbed that gold on a regular basis, thinking mm -hmm. it is it is the gloss. Nope, that's the mat. That is indeed the mat. I'm here, eyeball. Hello. Now, is the plan to put uh, multiple coats or just the one? I probably will to really amp up the glossiness, but you have to make sure there's some good dry time between. So while I'm watching the game, in about an hour, I'll go back in and add a little bit more of the gloss to the mouth and the eyeball. Nice. Yeah. And I will do the same. Yay, because we're both going to be watching the game. Yay. And right now there's like this weird cloudiness that happens. That's perfectly normal. Um, it's just, it's the, basically the substance. <laughs> so you can always just go around and move it around a little bit more or just let it dry and it will dry clear. So don't worry about that cloudiness if it starts to puddle in a couple of areas. If it's excessive, then you can pull it away and like just, you know, wick it off with your dry paintbrush and wipe it off in a paper towel. But otherwise that will become clear as it dries. Yeah, I'm basically trying to make sure it doesn't get stuck in between the yeah. teeth. Yeah. That's. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. I feel like that's where it's, at least on mine, that's where it wants to yeah. hang out. It wants to go there. <laughs> so this is an interesting one I'm seeing. Question, I'm planning to 3D print a translucent panther with the intention of painting over the front half to make it look like it's halfway through solidifying from mist. Any Ooh. thoughts or tips for this endeavor? Yes, dry brush in the midsection. Don't paint full opacity. Um, paint the front half as if you're painting a mini. Use dry brush techniques in the midsection and pull those through slightly towards the back portion. And then you should hopefully get a nice fade effect going on. Um, you can also pick up color shifting paints, which are a lot of fun, or a pearlescent paint um, to help kind of create a more magical misty effect. Um, I have a whole bunch from Plaid. Their Dragonfly brand is really cool for that type of transitioning stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what the other one was called. I don't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, give that a try and see if it works. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now, I got myself a gloss eyeball. Glossy eyeball. Gloss eyeball. Get yourself a glossy eyeball. All right. I'm going to pull out my. Look at that shine. Here. Where's my Kerberg? Okay, yeah, so we, you wanted me to grab... You wanted Kerberg, me to grab wash lines. Yes, Kerberg Crimson and uh, Drakenhoff Nightshade from the Citadel wash line. Which... No, go back in... There you go. Live in your drawer. There you go. Of course, the last two that I grab are the two I need. Mm -hmm. Kerberg Crimson and Drakenhoff Nightshade. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to use the Drakenhof on the stalagmites and the Karaberg on the cotton candy and hope that just sort of gives it a little more oomph color-wise. And this oh, is where, okay. when we're asking about the whole like inks and washes, if I knew Lauren had ink sets, inks probably would have been a better bet, but we're working off of paints, but having the washes will help create this effect that I'm trying to get. All right, <laughs> so Drakenhof on... The pillars. Yes. There we go. Ooh, that is definitely a lot darker than, uh, in a good way. I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad thing, but that's a lot darker than, yeah. yeah. There we go. That's what I want. These are the moments when when uh, someone had asked earlier about, oh, you know, do you do you do you wing it or not? And like, these are the wing it moments that I enjoy mm -hmm. watching you go through of like, well, this isn't exactly what I wanted, but yeah. we're going to do this and yep. this will get me what I want. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, 90 percent of the work I do is in my head at this point for painting minis especially for paint and slate, because I basically set up tutorial notes and everything for myself, like how we're going to go through it step by step, etc. 
Um, but then there's always that 10% where if something doesn't quite come out as I had hoped, it's being ready to pivot. Pivot! Pivot! Change! <laughs> Okay. And then you said the Carolberg on the cotton candy. Yes. Awesome. Oh, let me check. We're getting towards the end of the stream. Uh, Cause yeah, we're, we're already, we're almost there. So definitely if you have any questions, now is the time to get them on in because we want to make sure that we end in plenty of time before right. the stream, uh, we before the about what, charity minutes, stream. Right. Yeah, so we've basically got about 15 minutes left. Okay, cool. We'll be, we'll be um, totally so good. You, yeah. So if you do have any last minute questions, now is the time. Meanwhile, I'm going to get the base covered in <laughs> Carolberg Crimson. Cover your bases. Which is definitely a much... Uh, it sounds so much more deadly than what this roper is all about. <laughs> Carolberg Crimson. Crimson. Apparently, I just felt like throwing around my paper towels today. <laughs> oh, Where yeah. Yeah. It? Way over there. I've got a, I've got a tiny pile going on over here that mm -hmm. I always have to clean up afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's a thing. It's absolutely a thing. There. See? Now it's getting that lovely pink tinge that I wanted. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing how the the way that you get the essentially the brighter color that you wanted is to add what initially looks, looks like yeah yeah what i needed was more pigment pigment and that wasn't happening with the watered down paint colors so that's why i defaulted to going to a wash knowing there's going to be more pigments to play around you mean you needed more pinkment pinkment i need more pinkment you need more pinkment in your pigment uh -huh. your pink for pink I, i'm gonna stop <laughs> i'm gonna stop now done but yeah oh. that made all the difference cool and that made all the difference there we go Ta -da. so usually on my camera the minis don't uh, you you can't see as much detail because i do not have a camera that has that kind of close-up mm -hmm. ability but it's funny with a mini that is this brightly colored yes how that doesn't matter and it just pops anyway like just look at me yeah i love it all right Oh, people are already thanking us. Well, thank you for coming. Aww. Thank you for coming on by. Yeah. If you get a chance to stick around for the charity stream, Stay definitely do that. Stream, yeah. yeah. If you can't, uh, but you can still donate, we've got the exclamation mark donate command in chat. So you can pull up that Tiltify link and you can definitely help out a great cause and maybe cause some chaos in a level 20 D&D &D game. And, and maybe and win I'm one of these Europa. two minis. Ah. <laughs> these are so off the wall oh my gosh <laughs> it's ridiculous and, and then here we go uh candy corn roper candy corn candy for corn. scale i mean definitely candy corn now yeah. do we want to have some fun since we do have a little bit of time left mm. should we make this licorice really glossy as well because we can put mm. the mod podge gloss on those hmm i think it might be a fun touch yeah let's do it Yay! Okay, pull cool. back out the gloss. I put it away. <laughs> Yoda ate my head says, as if high level D&D &D with its broken math needs any help being chaotic. True. True. However, we're talking about outside of the game chaotic, yes, which is always yes. fun. Yeah, let's gloss. I think I'm going to do a one coat on this and go back in and do a secondary coat for the mouth and the eye, but I just feel like these tentacles need a little bit of zhuzhing up and brightening up Zhuzh. and shiny. Shiny! Sure. And yeah, level 20, it can be hard as a DM to try to mm. balance things. And I say balance in question just because, you know, there is only so much you can do just because yeah. of just because of what everybody has access to, but it's just it's just fun. 
And the ridiculousness, I think, is half the fun. Yeah. Or if you're playing in a campaign and it's been going on for a very long time and you finally get the chance as a character to make it to level 17, 18, 19, 20. At that point, at least in my experience, both as a player and as a DM, because my uh, my podcast game, we just finished up our first campaign and they went from one to 20. And at that point, it's really less about um, challenging in the traditional sense. It's it's not necessarily about, you know, oh, I'm going to throw uh, more monsters at you. I'm going to throw more dragons at you. I'm going to do, you know, I'm, I'm almost going to throw a world at you. Mm -hmm. And and it's more about, you know, what are the stakes outside of the combat? What are the yeah. uh, what are the other things going on? Or, hey, is this just an opportunity for you to look cool doing all the cool things that you've earned over the last 19 levels? So. Is this your Avengers moment? Exactly. I mean, before uh, our final few games, I made it a point to message all of my players individually and say, so what haven't you done yet that you really want to do? What 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 do I need to enable for you mm -hmm. to have a moment, you know? And I I won't uh I'll go out of my way to make a, a moment like that available. It's up to you whether you want to take it or not, but like, you know, hey, what what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? What kind yeah. of powers do you want to use? And then yeah, as a player, it's just fun and ridiculous. Okay, I think I'm just kind of cleaning up the the extra uh, bits where the gloss is congealed. Cuddling, yeah. Congealed is the wrong word. Collecting. Yeah. Pooling. Yeah. Congregating. I keep I keep turning the mini and then I keep, just keep finding another pool of gloss and I'm like, yeah, ew, it no. It happens. Ew, no. Especially with the segments because that's very puddle friendly. Yeah. But again, it will dry clear. If you're if you're worried you might miss a spot, it'll it'll come out clear, so not to worry. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> Blah. All right. Oh. Oh, uh, the Mole's Revenge asks, what's the coolest thing Orkira has done, even if it wasn't ulti ultimately successful? Oh, jeez. I mean, I'm going to limit it to um, mechanics because that's that's kind of what we've been talking about in general, like, you know, powers and abilities and, and stuff because like the, the super cool things that are the first things to come to my mind aren't necessarily the spells she's cast and the, the stuff that she's done. It's been like moments that she's had. Um, but she did get a chance to cast Resurrection. And that was super cool. Um, the other two moments. Can I? Can I be selfish? Why not? I would be super selfish. Yeah. So, Orkira uses a homebrew Phoenix subclass that uh, that I came up with. Uh, at first, she was a light cleric, and then she transitioned into that, and. I worked with a lot of really, really good people to do editing and, and Todd agreed to let me use it and everything. She has a, so the, the Phoenix subclass has a power, the level 17 ability in where it's essentially a death ward. You, the first time you die, you explode and then you come back at the beginning of the next round, you know, like a Phoenix would do. And I got a chance to use that in game and I didn't have a chance to warn the rest of the players that that's what was going to happen when she went down because oh we hadn't gotten to that point. So I was like frantically typing in the back because what I described is that uh, she when when you get to zero, your body and all, all the stuff you're carrying turns to ash. Like your body's just gone. Ooh. And so I described that and then I had to be in the backstage chat being like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. This is cool. This is cool. I've, cool. I got to do this ability thing. It's cool. And then, and because Orkira knew it was going to happen, she basically got to be like, I'll be right back. And then she just came back and was like, okay, where were we? So yeah, Funny. that was, 
that was super cool. Yeah. And the that other cool. the, the other selfish moment is I got to cast uh Revivify in combat using Orkira's Phoenix subclass in front of Jeremy Crawford. That is cool. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> but hey, look, we've got we got minis. We had the ropers. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, this is a and lot of fun. If Compared you to... would like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little ridiculous, but I love it. I love it so much. And if you would like a chance to win one of these two minis, V, what can they do to win one of these minis? They need to make sure they hit, you know, the exclamation donate. And there's a lot going on happening for the next stream. In fact, let me get this cycling back up again so yeah. you all can see the information. So, you know, you get those donations in. You have different opportunities and chances to enter for various raffles. So stick around for the stream following after. And you'll see, I mean, look at this. We have, look at all the stuff that's being provided by. Um, again, B Dave is going to be the DM for this special group of players. Uh, you're going to have, let's see here, you have uh, Charlene from Weva participating, as well as Nora, Tana, oh, there Jenny, we go. Alicia, Jeremy, and uh, like I said before, B Dave is going to be the DM. Uh, $10 to get a free tabletop bundle. Hello. And it's yeah. cool stuff in the bundle. So yeah, definitely check it out. Follow the link when you do the donate. And I believe there should be more information for all of the above and what's going to happen. And quite frankly, I'm excited to see who's going to have a chance to win these lovely candy corn little yeah. loafers going on. And I'm if, trying not to touch the bottom because it's still kind of wet. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, that's still wet. I'm not going to pick it up again. Yep. If you are, if, if you're in chat right now and you are one of the people who ends up winning one of these minis, first off, thank you for your awesome donation mm -hmm. and for hanging out. But if you are, I absolutely 100% want you to uh, post it on social media when you get it and uh, show it off. And then if you can, if you end up using it in a game, please let us know I, <laughs> because yeah. I would love to see that. <laughs> or or if not, you just put it up as a display piece of, look uh, at this awesome thing I won, helping out charity. Look you know, at this that's bit good of too. goofiness. Honestly, exactly. I totally see this as like as a roper that hangs out with a hag who's got like a gingerbread house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to get off so that we have plenty of time to let this this awesome thing happen. I can't wait. Next week, we will be back to the Jabber Walk, which the we Jabber. did start a couple weeks yes. ago, and we are I going to continue. To yeah, yeah. I have, I've had it in my box of stuff, and so the last two weeks, I've been pulling it out to put it out of the way, and I'm like, oh, this is super cool. So yeah, we're going to be going back to the Jabber Walk, which all the information is available on our Discord, discord.gg slash Idle Champions. And Drink. if you want to catch up with episode one of the Jabberwock, that's up on our YouTube. Yes. So take care, everyone. Have a great weekend and make sure you stay tuned. See you in the chats. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye.